Atmos, Gray's Highest. Ah, there's something about the air that's laced with moisture that just... It's like you breathe in and this feels good for me. Now, other people may not like moisture in the air or ocean breezes or maybe they're kind of, you know, into dry, hot, arid climates. But I kind of like the balance of all of them. I like to be able to go from the hot to the cold, from the warmth to the snow, from sunshine to darkness. That With the full spectrum, I get a variety of expressions of what God created and how he made each and every one of us unique and distinctive and how each one of the seasons seem to have their own charm and their own appeal to me in a certain way and how I enjoy them for what they are, as they are, even as I'm sure God enjoys you for who you are and is developing into developing you into what you are. In God, as he speaks to us through utmost, he is always working to us and in us to cause us to become likened unto him. So when we sit down and we read, we treat it as though God were speaking to us, that this is how he would change us and make us more like his son. Am I blessed like this? Blessed are, in Matthew 5, 3 to 10. When we first read the statements of Jesus, they seem wonderfully simple and unstartling, and they sink unobserved into our unconscious minds. For instance, the Beatitudes seem merely mild and beautiful precepts for all unworldly and useless people, but of very little practical use in the stern workaday world in which we live. The practical realities clash with the spiritual truth. We soon find, however, that the Beatitudes contain the dynamite of the Holy Ghost. They explode, as it were, when the circumstances of our lives cause them to do so. When the Holy Spirit brings to our remembrance one of these Beatitudes, we say, Wow, what a startling statement that is. And we have to decide whether we will accept the tremendous spiritual upheaval that will be produced in our circumstances if, and an important if, we obey his words. That is the way the Spirit of God works. We do not need to be born again to apply the Sermon on the Mount literally. The literal interpretation of the Sermon on the Mount is child's play. The interpretation by the Spirit of God as he applies our Lord's statements to our circumstances is the stern work of a saint. The teaching of Jesus is out of all proportion to our natural way of looking at things, and it comes with astonishing discomfort to begin with. We have slowly to, from our walk and conversation on the line of precepts of Jesus Christ, as the Holy Spirit applies them to our circumstances, it takes a little bit at a time. The Sermon on the Mount is not a set of rules and regulations. It is a statement of the life we live when the Holy Spirit is getting his way with us. It is who we are and who we are becoming. You know, I have a devotional <laughs> that is dedicated directly to the Sermon on the Mount. It's called Jesus Said, and literally we talk about and share the fact that Jesus didn't make these rash statements to inspire us to something that we could not attain, or something that was impossible to see in us, or something that wasn't a reality that the people knew exactly what he was saying, or that somehow it was some metaphor or simile or some wives tale or some theological or some inspirational message without there being any meat to it. No. As a matter of fact, Jesus was blunt. At the end of his sayings on the Sermon on the Mount, he said bluntly, the man who does these things is like a man who builds a house upon a rock. And when the storms of life come, his house stands. But the man who does not these sayings of mine is like a man who builds his house upon sand. And when the storms come, it's quite down. Take a look around your life right now. See what it is that makes up your life. What would happen if today, for the next year, you were without electricity? Would you lose your faith? Would you lose your God? 
take a look around and what would happen if for the next year you lost use of your limbs your arms and your legs who would you trust who would take care of you what would you do take a look around you and see if what you depend upon really is more of mankind than God kind because the God kind the people that are of God would be there for you not because you're wonderful or you're a saint, but because they have read the Sermon on the Mount and do it. That is what makes a Christian a real Christian. Not the fact that they have been saved from their sins, but they know what to do about it afterwards. After salvation has come to them, they know where to go, what to do, and how to be. And the only reason they do know that the only reason they do know how to be that because Jesus said, and he gave us the Sermon on the Mount.